Have you ever looked at a work of art and seen something that had been missed before? There was a mystery and a key, and you found it. My name is Ruth Dwyer, and that happened while I was looking very closely at the Ravenna mosaics, designed by Justinian and completed in the late 540s. With a camera, a 6th century document, and a Byzantine poem, wonderful discoveries were made. Justinian's reign as emperor began officially in 527. Between 532 and 537, he had built the magnificent Hagia Sophia, also known as the Hagia Sophia, or Church of Holy Wisdom, in Constantinople. During this time, the writer Cassiodorus noted, Something unusual seems to be coming on us from the stars. The word unusual hardly accounts for what happened. Indeed, what did come upon them has been described as apocalyptic because in the spring of 536, the Earth was stricken with a massive event, causing a global environmental downturn. The focus of my research has been Justinian's empire, which spanned most of Europe. While ramifications of the event were experienced globally, we will be examining what was documented in Europe. As explained in my first video, Pythagoras and the Hagia Sophia, the stars were particularly important to Justinian. His imperial entrance was built at a very precise location. The latitudinal coordinates link the entrance itself with the constellation Lyra and particularly the star Vega. Also, the coronation site was a star map of Lyra. With this event, the stars continued to play a significant role in Justinian's life. Now let us consider Cassiodorus's quote, something unusual is coming on us from the stars. What does this mean? We know there was a catastrophe and that something was arriving from the sky. Let us consider that a comet was coming toward the Earth. Regarding comets, my research has found the following. A comet's tail is composed of a great deal of debris, including meteorites, large and small, rocks, and dust. If a comet were to have a close encounter with the Earth, this debris would enter our atmosphere. Very large meteorites would crash to the Earth causing earth tremors, which would feel like earthquakes. Meteorites, large and small, would burn upon their descent. Some would explode, creating air bursts, resulting in shock waves. Clouds could have the appearance of being on fire. The tail of the comet is loaded with debris, which would collect in our atmosphere and fall to Earth. As the world turns on its axis, the atmosphere of the entire planet would be filled with this dust. For the population, the appearance of the atmosphere would be dust clouds or a dry fog. This would make the light of the sun very weak, and potentially the sun could seem to be an unusual color. Because of the nature of the debris, the sunlight would refract instead of being absorbed by the dust cloud. Thus heat would escape from the earth and there would be an extreme drop in temperatures it would be very cold. There would be almost no rainfall, resulting in drought. With the lack of sunlight, trees and plants would die, crops would fail, there would be terrible famines. Did these things happen? Yes, they did, and we have a fascinating window into this period of time. We know that the completion of the mosaics of Santa Polinar and Classa and San Vitale was at the end of the 540s. There are also records of an extremely terrible weather cycle during this time, beginning in 536. The drastic weather continued past the time of the mosaic's completion. Inhabiting these mosaics are biblical figures, such as Abel and Melchizedek, who obviously did not live through the weather just discussed. Their roles in the mosaics and other themes will be discussed in future videos. It is wonderful to discover that one of the themes of the mosaics is concerned with life before, during, and after the comet's arrival. Let us begin by looking at Santa Polinar and Classa. We know from a letter written by Cassiodorus that the year before the arrival of the comet was a wonderful year. The weather was beautiful and the harvests were bountiful. When we look at the mosaics in the apse of the extraordinary church of Santa Polinar and Classa, it strikes us as being a beautiful garden, a place which could be a memory of the year before the comet. We see the hand of God at the top of the mosaic and below it everything that he has created. 
a sunny sky with white and pastel clouds. The night sky is clear with glittery stars. The garden below is lush, trees are flourishing and thick with leaves. And the garden has many flowers, birds and animals. Indeed, Santa Apollinaire is raising his hands in celebration and thanks. Here are details of the fluffy clouds and the lush garden. The setting is augmented by the side mosaics of palm trees heavy with coconuts. And when we look at the border, we see that it consists of leaves and fruit. Let us remember this border because it is in stark contrast to borders which we will see shortly. We have already examined the effects of a comet's close encounter with the Earth. Let us compare those with the mosaics. We'll begin with fiery clouds. Above the bountiful garden is a most interesting upper mosaic, which is the opposite of what we see below. God and saints arrive in a sky which is black with fiery red clouds. The skies are no longer starry, they are ominous. These clouds resemble descriptions of the meteorite airbursts in which clouds appear to burst into flame, and which Romanos Melodos, Justinian's poet, described as massive lightning-streaked cloud, the fire billowed into the entire sky. Here is a comparison with the woodcut of the Great Comet of 1577, which was visible over Europe. Both have fiery clouds. A detail shows us just how fiery they appear. If the garden mosaic below this was a representation of life before the comet, then perhaps this is what Cassiodorus referred to when he wondered what was coming toward us. We know that meteors, when they explode in the air, can create both fiery clouds and a shockwave. Let us turn to the mosaics of San Vitale. This one has an interesting bow shape, a semicircle in the midst of clouds. On the outside of the circle are white, fluffy clouds. Inside the semicircle, and at its outer edge, are fiery clouds and the hand of God which is pointing. This image strongly suggests the conditions of a shockwave, which would accompany the arrival of a comet. According to Dr. Steve Nelson of the Earth Sciences Department at Tulane University, such a shockwave could have been visible to those in the vicinity. And here we see fiery clouds again, around the hand of God. When very large meteorites fall to Earth, each impact causes an earthquake. Romanos Melodos, in his poem On Earthquakes and Fires, wrote, He shakes the earth and makes the ground gnash. Earthquakes caused by meteors create rifts in the ground, creating unevenness and openings where the land was smooth before. In the mosaic where Moses is tying his sandal, the ground is uneven with large rifts. And in the mosaic in which Moses receives a document, the uneven ground beneath his feet is also stricken with separations. Now we are going to consider raining fire. When the burning meteorites fell to earth, some of them were clustered in swarms. These could cause fires on the ground, and the wind, whipping fiery debris, such as leaves through the air, could resemble raining fire. In the mosaic in which Moses is tying his sandal, he is surprised at the fiery debris which is falling all around him. He finds himself in the midst of raining fire. The mosaic is quite detailed and even has little smoke trails following the raining, fiery debris. When we step back from the mosaic, we can see that it is next to the shockwave and that the same fiery clouds have brought both the shockwave and the raining fire. Dust clouds and very thick dry fog lasted for years. Back here is a white hazy area, suggesting that this could be the dry fog which followed the raining fire. Note that in the dry fog area, the trees are leafless and dead. In this mosaic, three saints have halos around their heads. The sky behind them is overcast, with fiery clouds approaching to the right. In the same mosaic, Abraham has something behind his head as well, but it is not a halo. It is white and cloudy looking, also perhaps suggesting a dust cloud and dry fog. Since the fiery clouds of the comet were followed by so much dust in the air that the sun was dimmed, could this be the dense dry fog of dust which caused the trees to die? Since there are dead trees beside this dry fog, it seems quite possible. 
In one of his letters, Cassiodorus writes, All of us are still observing, as it were, a blue-colored sun, which has assuredly been going on through almost the entire year. Due to light refraction and dense particles in the dry fog, our ordinarily yellow sun would have appeared to Cassiodorus and to Europeans as blue and thus dim. The border around the mosaic resembles light as it looks when refracted through a prism. The same colors are in the fiery clouds in the sky, the gold background indicating this could be daytime. This blue disk is likely not the Earth, because when we look at it, there are no indications of any continents or landmass. It seems possible that this could be the blue sun reported by Cassiodorus. Historians reported a shortage of rain and years of failed crops. The Earth was parched. With such weak sunlight, very little rain, and thick dust in the air for an extended period of time, it is no surprise that terrible droughts followed and that famines were extreme. Photosynthesis would have diminished or ceased, causing plants and trees to die and crops to fail. If we compare a photo of parched ground on the left with one of the San Vitali mosaics on the right, we see that the mosaic artists were accurate in depicting land in a severe state of drought. There are rifts, both small and large, in the ground, including under God's feet, And next to the people standing together, they do not look happy. And trees are dead. By comparison, the beautiful garden had no dry fog, no parched earth, and no dead trees. Beginning at the time of the arrival of the comet in 536, temperatures plunged. With the help of a temperature chart by Dr. Michael Bailey, based on tree ring analysis, we know that there was a terrible and extreme downturn in temperatures that lasted for nine years until 545. Cassiodorus informs us of perpetual frost, terrible cold, and unnatural drought during the growing season. In two San Vitali mosaics, the figures at left sit comfortably in light clothing, and in the mosaic at right, we see St. Luke huddling against the cold. His cloak is wrapped tightly around him, and he has folded part of it over his left hand to form a sort of mitten. The saints sit amongst flowers. There are no flowers around St. Luke, but there are white areas that suggest the possibility of frost or snow. Below him is a wading bird, an ibis with a small body of water. The ibis appears to be standing on the water, not in it, and the water area is white in color, indicating that this could possibly be ice. The small plant beside the bird is dead. Above him, some trees appear to be half-dead, with brown limbs. And this tree has white dots, suggesting snow. Let us now consider the borders. The borders at St. Apollinar and Classa consisted of leaves and fruit. The borders at San Vitale are a stark contrast. The background is dark, and there are many images which appear explosive. It is also extremely beautiful, the detail indicating master craftsmen at their very best. When we look again at the woodcut of the 1577 comet, we see how the comet and the exploding meteorites appear to the people on the ground. The sky is filled with many streaks of light, which flash out in all directions. The borders at San Vitale have multicolored streaks, which seem to explode out from many central disks. Their colors are those of the full spectrum. Visible in the woodcut are clusters of white light shooting through the night sky, with streaks of debris trailing behind. The same is true of San Vitale. The meteorites in the woodcut are small and large, and each one looks a little different from the others. Again, the same is true at San Vitale. The borders consist of larger and smaller bursts, each one a bit different from the others. And the patterns at their centers never seem to be duplicates, implying a constant change in appearance. Is this how the meteors appeared to them as the debris, large and small, fell to the earth in 536? At San Vitale we have already seen one shock wave. We know that meteorites produce shock waves when they explode, and these waves can be visible to the naked eye. 
We know of the drought and the famine. Following the famine, there was also a devastating disease, Justinian's plague. In this mosaic, we see a man with afflictions. His clothing is worn, his face is unhappy, and he has black lesions on his forehead and his upper lip. In his Contagion, or poem, on earthquakes and fires, Romanos Melodos addresses the terrible circumstances experienced by the citizens. Let us compare the mosaics with portions of his poem. The Creator delivered one blow after another. Like a massive lightning-streaked cloud, the fire billowed into the entire sky, consuming everything, crashing, creating panic. He shakes the earth and makes the ground gnash. We wailed during the period of earthquakes. The flames did not yield to fierce headwinds. Men's hands were useless in trying to control the flames. The fire fought against them and was victorious. The Lord commanded the raindrops in the clouds never to fall on earth. The flames, eager to engulf the city, were fed by roof timbers and whipped into a firestorm by ferocious winds. Without doubt, the emperor and his queen were in these ranks, their eyes lifted in hope. Deliver the city from all catastrophes, earthquake, famine, death. It is difficult to imagine that things could become worse, but they did. The effects of the comet on the earth seem to have created a perfect environment for the plague to spread, which resulted in the first recorded pandemic in history. Between drought, famine, and disease, the terrible cycle claimed between 25 and 100 million lives globally. Between one-third to one-half of the population of Europe died. Even Justinian fell ill with the plague. Miraculously, he survived it. So, the Ravenna mosaics, having been completed before the calamity had run its course, give us an interesting view of the tumult during Justinian's rule. Though biblical figures inhabit the mosaics, the settings demonstrate remarkably accurately the extreme weather events of the time. We know from a number of sources from the 6th century that terrible environmental effects were taking their toll on Europe. The aptly titled On Earthquakes and Fires by Romanos Melodos informs us that the ground was shaking, the sky was burning, and catastrophe was everywhere. These findings are based on my own personal observations, and I'm lucky to have found scientific data conducted by professionals to whom I owe a great deal of thanks. What conclusions can we reach? We can conclude that the mysterious something which was coming toward the Earth from the stars was most likely a comet, and that near-apocalyptic death and destruction were the result. With respect to the Ravenna mosaics, we can conclude that one of the themes of the mosaic cycles is the weather pattern of the era preceding and following the comet. St. Apollinaire and Classa, with its beautiful garden mosaics, gives us a glimpse into the time before the comet. And the mosaics of San Vitale demonstrate the chaos which followed the comet's arrival. These revelations allow us to look at Ravenna in an entirely new light. After seeing the devastation in the mosaics, is it any wonder that Melodus begged for deliverance from all catastrophes, earthquake, famine, and death? Ravenna has many mysteries, and a key to one of them has been found, adding yet another layer of meaning to an already intellectually complex and magnificent program. Is it not extraordinary that this has been hidden for so long?